In this video, we're going to see how we can evaluate a model that we've learned during data mining. In the previous video, we saw how we could use classification learning to take a set of training examples about customers and to learn a model like a decision tree that predicts how likely it is that a given customer will buy a computer in the next year. And we talked about how this model works, how it makes predictions for customers that we haven't seen before. The question is, how good are these predictions? And it's important to start by saying that for most real-world data sets, no model that we learn is going to work perfectly on all possible examples. There's always some degree of inaccuracy. And our goal is not to create a model that matches the training data perfectly, because that training data has already been classified. What we care about is being able to do well on examples we haven't seen before. And this is referred to as having a model that is able to generalize. It's able to go beyond the specific examples that were used to train it and to handle more general instances of whatever it is it's trying to classify. So in the case of our model that we saw in the previous video, we want to be able to predict whether a customer we've never seen before will buy a computer or not. So how do we actually determine whether our model is able to do this? What we typically do is withhold some of the available data as test examples. We don't actually use it for training. Instead, we keep it for figuring out how accurate the model is going to be. So let's say, for example, that we had data for 100 customers. All of it has already been classified, meaning we already know whether those customers purchased a computer or not. Instead of using all of that data for training, we're going to say maybe use 90% of it to learn the model. That's going to be our training data. And the other 10 examples will be used to test the model. Now in reality, we'd like to have even more data than this so that we can have more examples for training and more for testing. But this will allow me to illustrate how the test examples get used. So let's imagine that these are our 10 test examples. They were not used to train the model. As was the case with our training data, these examples have already been classified. So you see that right here. They have values for the output attribute, which in this case is whether the customer bought a computer. We already know for these 10 whether they did or not. But rather than just having that actual value, we're going to take this by computer and add a subcolumn. So we have the actual value for this particular customer. And then we're going to figure out what the model predicts for this customer. And we'll see if the prediction matches the actual value. So take, for example, the first instance here, the first example. Because that customer has an age of 45, we're going to go down this branch of the decision tree and it predicts that yes, the customer will buy a computer. And as you can see, that matches what was actually the case. The customer actually did buy a computer. And so the prediction is correct in this case, so I'm coloring it green for correct. However, if we look at the second row here, the second test example, because this customer has an age of 22 and is a student, we end up going down these branches of the tree, and the prediction is, yes, this customer will buy a computer. But when we look what actually happened, this customer did not actually purchase a computer, and therefore the model, which predicts yes, gets this example wrong, and so I'm coloring it red. And we just keep doing this for all of our test examples, and we see that it gets six of the examples correct, if the customer actually bought a computer, the model predicts yes. If the customer did not, the model predicts no. Those are the green values here. Those are the ones that it got correct, but it gets four of them wrong. So in addition to this second row, here's another example. The customer actually did buy a computer, but the model predicts that the customer would not buy it. One way to summarize how well the model does on these test examples is to say that it has an accuracy of 6 out of 10, or 
because again, out of those 10 examples, it got six of them right. Its prediction matched the actual classification. We can also talk about the error rate of the model. In this case, it's 4 out of 10, or 40%. These two metrics are useful, but they're overly simple. They treat all mistakes that the model makes as being equally bad. And so one more nuanced way to talk about how well the model did is to create a confusion matrix. So we set up a table. The rows of the table are based on the actual class value. So in this case, the actual value of by computer. And then the columns are based on the predicted class. So let's start with the actual yeses. There are four of them. You can see I've highlighted them in blue here. And then what we do is, for those four, we say how many of them were correctly predicted. So for how many of the actual yeses does the model predict yes? And in this case, you can see that it's three out of the four. It correctly predicts yes for those actual yeses. And so we put a three right here at the intersection of actual yes, predicted yes. And then over here, because there is one case in which it predicts no when the actual class is yes, we put a 1 right here. Again, that's at the intersection of actual yes, predicted no. And then we do the same thing for the actual no's. So you can see there's six of them. And out of those six, it predicts three of them as yes. So I've highlighted them up here. It gets those wrong and it predicts three of them as no's, it gets those correct because it's an actual no and a predicted no. And so this is what's known as a confusion matrix and it gives us more detail. It allows us to see, for example, that the model does better with the actual yeses than it does with the actual no's. And it's worth pointing out, if you focus on what's called the diagonal of the matrix, and that is going diagonally from the upper left to the lower right, those values are the ones that the model gets right. They are the correctly classified because it's actual yes, predicted yes, and then actual no, predicted no. The off-diagonal numbers are the ones that the model gets wrong.